Hey guys, let's talk about last night's episode of The Originals. And it was a good episode. I really liked the way that it picked up with um, Marcel and Klaus all at this dinner table. And Klaus was giving this big speech to all the vampires, pretty much welcome, welcoming them all to his... I guess the new world order and, um, you know, giving him this, them the big speech that, that they're all welcome there and that this is going to be a new day and blah, blah, blah. And of course, Marcel is sitting there right beside him and his men are all looking at him like, are we really supposed to be buying all this crap? And we get some flashbacks showing Rebecca and Marcel pretty much talking about having to do this just to save face because if, Klaus thinks that Marcel isn't there for him loyally, then he will, you know, kill him. And so, of course, they're just playing it up and making it seem like they're all on on uh, Klaus's side when really they're just doing it to save face. And, you know, we get another flashback with Marcel talking to his right hand man, pretty much saying the same thing. Like, listen, I've got a bigger plan going on. We're just going to amuse Klaus for now, but just follow my lead. And, you know, they have this really nice dinner. And then all of a sudden these like humans cut their arms and like dripping blood and just pretty much saying like, this is how we're going to rule now. Like, you know what I mean? So it's kind of Klaus showing off, but you know, his time at the top isn't going to last long if he doesn't get his ego in check. So Marcel pretty much is like rolling his eyes at Klaus this entire time because, you know, Klaus thinks he's the big bad and Marcel is still like trying to let him know that you can't just rule by fear. Like there are certain things that we have done to this point and that is why I'm respected. That is why I have the respect of pretty much like the, the faction in um, New Orleans, which is kind of like the council from... The Vampire Diaries. And uh, Marcel says, listen, we have a meeting with them and they want to talk about, you know, what's going on because they knew they know that the leadership has changed and everything. So, of course, Marcel's like, sure, I'll, I'll humor these people, but whatever, I'm the king and they're going to pretty much have to do what I say. And when he gets them, the face to face with them, he pretty much says the same thing. And he's like, listen, I'm going to give you whatever you get. You're going to get whatever breadcrumbs I say you're going to get. And I'm the king of the castle. So beat it is pretty much what he tells them. And, um, you know, Klaus doesn't think that he's messing with anybody. So he goes about his day and Marcel's like, listen, I don't really think you handled that the best way. But, you know, you're the king, so you can do what you want. And then he gets a phone call. Klaus gets a phone call. And they're like, yeah, we thought about your terms and your conditions. And um, this is what we think about it. And boom, they shoot up the place that they're in. People, all the, witch, all the vampires who don't have daylight rings burn into flames. They're shooting bullets everywhere. So, you know, Klaus, not so happy anymore. So now Marcel, of course, isn't happy because, you know, Marcel doesn't want anybody turning on his vampires either. And they, you know, about five or six of them died in the fire. So now the two of them are like, well, let's kill them all. So this brings an interesting turn of events because now it would appear that Marcel and um, Klaus are going to work together to take out this faction. And they actually do just that. They go and they, you know, do what vampires do. They gut them, they rip their throats out and blah, 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 blah. And it kind of brings them into sort of a bonding moment. And they and it's, the, it's a really great scene because Klaus is, you know, drinking out of his flask and he's pretty much saying to him, listen, I want, he's like, I, like they, it, he pretty much knows that Marcel has been faking it this entire time. And he's like, listen, I know that you have been acting as though you're my right hand man, but listen, I want you to be my brother. I want us to go back to the way things were. And they reveal some information about, you know, back when Marcel was young, I guess his dad treated him like a second class citizen the same way that Klaus's father treated him. So I guess when they were younger, they could bond over this, the fact that their fathers had disdain for them. And so he says it, he says, listen, I don't want my son to grow up the way I was treated. And he's, he, he's just pretty much extending an olive branch to Marcel and saying, Please be my brother, be loyal to me. The only way that these other people are going to be loyal to me is if you like lead them that way. He's like, I see what you've done. I see how you've gotten all of them to love you and, and be loyal to you. And I want that. And I, I kind of believe Klaus in this moment. I believe that, 
you know, he does care about Marcel, that they had a really good friendship when they were younger and through their hundreds of years as vampires or whatever. But, you know, all that changed. And so they kind of have this little, you know, wink of an eye bonding moment where Marcel takes a drink from the flask and it looks like they're going to go on and rule the kingdom side by side as equals and not sort of like one under the other. So we'll see how long that lasts because... Marcel, of course, meets up with Rebecca and he says, listen, your brother is trying to be nice and I'm trying to follow suit. But, you know, if he finds out that we keep meeting like this and this is going to be problems. And of course, Rebecca's jealous because she's like, you're choosing him over me again. And she throws in a little juicy tidbit that apparently something happened in 1919 that if Klaus ever found out that would destroy their friendship forever. So, hmm, what is that piece of juiciness? I can't wait to find out. And of course, Marcel has this look on his face like, you best not be saying nothing, girl. <laughs> so it was kind of um, an interesting moment because it's almost like at the end of this episode, nobody got their happy ending, which was interesting. And like I said about Klaus, Klaus has little glimmers and moments of where you see that he can be a nice guy. And again, he shows this with Cammy because Cammy is, of course, very inquisitive. She knows she's being compelled. She knows that Marcel is, is pretty much like doing all these horrible things, but yet telling her to forget all about it. And at the beginning, you know, she's, of course, writing his memoirs and Marcel comes in and he's like, oh, when did this happen? Like you two are hanging out. And, you know, what I kind of like too with Klaus this episode was he was very honest with Marcel and he was telling him every little bit of information that he already kind of knew, but that if he didn't know, he now knows. And he was honest about Cammy that yes, he compelled her to go out with Marcel and blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, they were having some like real honest moments throughout this episode. But back to Cammy, she is pretty much frustrated with the fact that, you know, her, her, her mind keeps being, you know, zapped and she can't remember anything. And when she gets home, she's got all these sticky notes around her house and somebody has left a, a recorder and it is the whole entire conversation that Klaus and her had with Marcel there. And so she's able to play it back and she hears herself saying those exact words. Like, I, I keep forgetting things and I know you want me to think I'm crazy, but I know that you keep compelling me to forget all this stuff. And of course he does. And so she's freaking out. And so she, of course, calls her her uncle, Kieran, who's the priest. And, you know, she's trying to confess to him, like, I know something's going on, but he is like too busy trying to get the faction off you know, trying not to get them killed, but it's too late because it happens. And, um, you know, we get a nice little scene with, with Klaus and he's pretty much saying, you know, I care about you and that is why you need to go. And he compels her again one more time to leave town. So of course, you know, she's packing up her bags and she's ready to go. And who comes to her door? Davina. Now, Davina, we all know, is the all-powerful witch who has been working with Marcel and has been under Marcel's protection because the witches want to kill her. And one of the things that she was afraid of was, uh, was one of the eldest witches. And she died a few episodes ago and Elijah had snapped her neck, killed her and all this. But Marcel never told Davina this. So when this is revealed to her through Haley and confirmed by Josh, she freaks out and she's like, I can't trust Marcel. I need to leave here. So she shows up on Cammie's door and she's like, I need your help. I can't trust Marcel anymore. You need to help me. And she's like, do I know you? And of course, because her brain has been zapped so many times, she's like, oh Lord, you've been compelled. I can fix this. And she like does this whole like witchy thing to her. And she's like, ah! and she's like screaming her head off. She's <laughs> so... Cammy now is getting all of her memories back. And of course, this is going to force her to stay and stick around in town. Now, the one storyline that I thought was kind of, you know, I just, I don't know, guys. Like, I I like Haley with um, Elijah, but Haley on her own, uh, she just kind of bothers me. I don't really like her that much. So all the scenes when she was in them by herself, I was kind of like, well, boring. But we found out that um, because Klaus, of course, was so bitter cakes at the beginning of the episode, he sent all the vampires out to kill all the werewolves that are lurking around in the bushes. And of course, Haley doesn't want this because they're her family and she doesn't want her family to, to die. So of course, El Elijah and um, um, Caroline, Caroline, Rebecca, <laughs> sorry, had a Vampire Diaries moment there, but Rebecca 
have been tasked to go and save all these these werewolves. And when they stumble upon this one werewolf who we who we met in last week's episode or a couple weeks ago, she pretty much tells them that there's a whole group of werewolves that are coming back because they're all fascinated with the with the um birth, with the new baby that Haley is carrying and they all want to see it for with their own eyes. So they're like, well, why do we care about this? And she's like, well, you're going to want to care about this. And they send her, they send them off and we find out that apparently Klaus's mother, um, we find out that we might find out who Klaus's father is. Kind of cool. So they met some guy and he had this necklace and it had their mother's ring on it. And what it obviously after interrogating him, we find out that they know he knows where Klaus's father or his ancestral line may lead them to. So that was some cool information there. And then, of course, when Klaus finds this out, he goes to Kieran and is like, listen, I need your help. And because if all the vampires find out that I'm going to protect these werewolves, then there's going to be a problem. So I need you to do some priestly thing and get all your faction people to protect the werewolves. So I guess that's his mission now. And he's like, I'll do it under one condition. You'll get Cammy out of town. And of course, he believe, he agrees. And so, you know, he agreed to, to compel Cammy and get her out. But of course, Davina got to her first, so she's not going anywhere. So we got a lot of little, um, little great reveals in this episode. You know, um, like I keep saying, this show is definitely doing its own thing. It's not relying on the success of the Vampire Diaries to lead its storyline. They're definitely building their own show here, and I like that. There's a lot of um, great questions that were brought up in this episode. You know, we the, the last like little montage, and like I said earlier, that no one got their happy ending because, you know, basically Klaus compels Cammy to leave, and so she's about to leave. And then Marcel chooses Klaus over Rebecca, so she's all upset. And then Haley and Elijah have their scene together, and they're all kind of googly eyes at one another, but then th nothing happens there. So, you know, everybody's kind of forced to deal with their relationships, and then these relationships are not going any further. So I like that. It was a good episode, guys. I like that this, I think, is the last episode before the break. Maybe there's one or two more. I would be very pleased if there was because I'm really enjoying this show. All right, guys, let me know what you thought of the originals. And if you thought that I left out any important in pieces of information, I would love for you to clarify that for me. Um, again, I mean, Klaus was a bit of a whiner again in this episode, but I also thought he had some other great qualities that he brought out in this episode. Oh, one other thing I wanted to say was that last scene between Elijah and Klaus when Klaus is on the stairs. I really enjoyed it. When, you know, Elijah apologizes to Klaus. I mean, come on. I I'm the first one to say that nobody needs to apologize to Klaus. But he apologizes to him for claiming that he was going to use Haley's baby to, you know, destroy the world with hybrids. And he apologized. And for a split second, Klaus looks like he wants to smile and hug his brother. But, you know, he says that must have taken a lot out of you. And Klaus rightfully says, you make it very hard for us to love you. And that is the truth. Klaus makes it very difficult for anyone to want to love him. Uh, but, you know, he then says, whenever you and Rebecca are ready, this is your home and you're welcome to come back to it. So, you know, there was a nice little moment between him and his brother and uh, we'll see if that continues as the show moves forwards. All right, guys, that has been my review for the originals, and I will see you next time. Bye.